This video previews the WebAssembly Explorer, a tool that Mozilla is developing to help you experiment with and understand WebAssembly directly in your browser. WebAssembly is a new low-level binary format for programs on the web that complements JavaScript's high-level uh, interpreted nature. The way WebAssembly works typically is that you'll start with a lower level language like C or C++, though we hope that high level languages will be supported in the future. And you can write a program like, let's see, int foo, int x, uh, return x divided by two. So this is just a function that will take a single value and return whatever half of that value is. And the way WebAssembly works is that it defines a kind of abstract virtual machine that we can use as a compiler target. So we can tell our C compiler that we want it to produce WebAssembly. And when I hit compile, that's what you see in the middle column of the Explorer. Now, WebAssembly isn't what your CPU understands directly, but it's a lot closer to that. There is a final step that your browser will have to take this WebAssembly and convert it to native machine code. And that's what you see on this third column. But for the purposes of this video, we're gonna focus in the middle on the WebAssembly itself. Now, WebAssembly is a binary format, but we need to have some sort of human-readable textual representation. And that's what, what this is. The binary format's finished, but we're still developing the text format. One way to look at it is this abstract syntax tree view. But in reality, WebAssembly is implemented as a stack machine. So if I come over to the side and I click this clean WAST option, you can see that the function body got flattened out. To, to more closely represent the actual way that this binary would look to the, the compiler. In this case, what we're doing is we're defining a single function that accepts a single variable and it returns a single result. And the variable and the result are both 32-bit integers. The body of the function gets x, our local variable, and puts it on the stack. Then it puts a constant value of two on the stack and it calls i32div, which pops two values off the stack, divides them, and returns the result onto the stack. One thing we can do with the extra type information that C gives us is that we can define not only is this an integer, this is actually an unsigned integer. It's only going to be positive. And if I do that, instead of dividing by two, my function body changes to shifting right by one. Because in binary, if you move all the bits of an integer to the right by one, you're effectively cutting it in half. And this works if I change this for any power of two. So I could change this to dividing by 16. And you can see that this now shifts right by a constant value of four. Now I wanna pause and, and address the, these opcodes. If you're interested in what the opcodes are, what, what's available to you, WebAssembly is a pretty primitive language. It, it only has vocabulary to describe 32-bit uh, and 64-bit integers and floating point numbers. And if you want to see the actual opcodes, if you go to webassembly.org and go into the docs, the semantics page has lists of all of the, the various operations. Now, I can, edit, I can edit the C over here and I can compile it, but I can also manually edit this WebAssembly. So let's say let's shift right by one and let's download the result. So I now have a file called test.wasm that's a binary with this function body. And if I go over to a web server that's, that's serving up that file, uh, or a web page that, that has access to that file, let's look at how we actually use it. So in the browser, I can open up my JavaScript console and I'm going to say fetch test.wasm. And then with the result, I'm going to return result array buffer. So this just uh, doesn't do any text conversions or it doesn't try to parse JSON. It just takes the raw bits that it does, the, the response, the raw bytes, and sets them as an array buffer. And fetch, uh, it's kind of a replacement for AJAX or XHR requests, is a promise-based API. So we get a promise back immediately and that will eventually resolve into an array buffer. So let's go ahead and pop this out into a global variable, temp zero, and there's our 95 byte long array buffer. If I want to actually take this, this raw binary of our program and, and turn it into something I can interact with, I need to call webassembly.instantiate and pass it that buffer, temp zero. Now this is also going to return a promise because we want to do the compilation asynchronously. We don't want to stop and block as we're doing this translation from WebAssembly that final step into native code. And so this promise will eventually 
return an object. And if we pop that out to a global variable temp1, you can see that the object has two properties, module, which is a WebAssembly module, and instance, which is a WebAssembly instance. The difference between a module and an instance is kind of the same as the difference between a binary, like a .exe file on your desktop, and an actual running program. So the module is, is inert. It doesn't have any memory associated with it. It's just the code. But the instance is a running version of that code. So if I access temp1.instance, we see that it has a property on it called exports. And inside exports is our function foo which is the, the function that we wrote in C to half a number. Now we're dealing with integers, so if we pass a three to this, it returns one because 1 1.5 is a floating point number instead, uh, but this works. If I pass two, we get one. If I pass 100, we get 50. And what you're seeing here is JavaScript in the browser console being used to call into a function written in WebAssembly. And the browser is doing that computation and returning that value back up into the browser. This is a, just a, a very brief and simple overview of how you can use WebAssembly and how you can use the Explorer. There are also a number of example programs like a factorial calculation or Duff's device that you can use and view in the Explorer and experiment with. But if you're trying to do something heavier weight, if you need to pull in other libraries, there actually is a production grade compiler called mscripten that Mozilla has been developing to take arbitrary C and C++ and turn it into WebAssembly. So if you're, if you're interested in actually adding this to your tool chain, use Emscriptum. If you're interested in just learning about and experimenting with and seeing what WebAssembly looks like, the Explorer is a great place to start.